Hi again, everybody. My name is Lonnie Bowling, and today we're going to do part six, which is going to continue our exploration into uh, the Pi system SDKs. And specifically, we're going to be working with the AF uh, system, and we're going to be looking at um, elements within the AF system. So, a really common uh, scenario is when you're working it within AF. Uh, an AF database, you're the, the primary uh, object in an AF uh, database are elements. And elements have uh, things like attributes, and they can also have sub-elements, and then there's uh, other things that uh, tie into elements. But elements is really like a core component of, uh, of AF and, and where everything starts. So um, in the previous uh, video we looked at connecting to our database now what I want to do is I want to look into uh, how we can access and start uh, looking at elements and doing different things with elements so uh, this will be a pretty straightforward video and hopefully you'll find that um, when you're all when I'm all done here that you know it's not that big of a deal to you to go in and examine what, what elements are about so let's go ahead and uh, start up uh, let's go back uh, to our, um, let's go into AF and take a look at where where we are. Um, so if you remember in the last video, we had a database here, and we had get we had gotten an instance of our default database, and we we're able to connect to it. So the um, next item is if you come down and you look at uh, this line, you'll see that there's uh, there's these various uh, uh, namespaces, analysis, assets and uh, event frames, modeling, and so forth, notifications. Remember I was telling you about how AF, using AF, gives you all these new capabilities. And so these are uh, uh, huge classes uh, of different functionality uh, that you can use within AF. And so I certainly would, um, would um, highly recommend that you investigate some of these items and, you've, and you see what the capabilities are because there's, there's a lot of uh, power behind these. But there, like I said, the, the, the foundation of the really most basic part is this uh, asset area. And within those assets, uh, the, the, the big workhorse is the elements. And so you can see we have an elements, uh, an elements class, and under that we have an element. And so it's similar to how we had Py systems going to a single system. Uh, Pi database, AF databases going to a single database. Now we have AF elements going to a single element. So you see this pattern over and over and over within the um, within the SDK. Uh, but what I what I specifically wanted to go after right right off the bat is kind of um, what I would say the main method in my back pocket that I almost use you know use a lot and um, and that's within, and that's how to find elements. You know, we want to be able to go in and, and get a collection of elements, and find a specific, uh, uh, maybe find a specific element within a uh, database. And and in order to do that, we need to have some kind of method. And so under this AF element class, there is a there is a capability to do searches and to find. Um, to find uh, uh, various uh, various ways to find elements, and so if I come over to the members, I want to come down here, and you can see there's this uh, find element, find element, find element, and then there's find elements, and the find elements is really the, uh, what I find the most useful, and uh, there's a ton of them, and um, I'm not going to go through all of these obviously, but we will go through the first one, and that's this top one here, which is kind of uh, I'd say the most basic one. We're going to use this find elements here. All right, so let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and set up some stuff uh, for us to uh, for us to work in. I'm going to create a new element here. All right, so let's go ahead and create some elements. No, nope, don't want to model. I want to um, I want a new element, and I'll create another new element. So I've got three elements here. Let's call this uh, tank one, and we'll call this one uh, tank two, and this one uh, tank tank three. Okay, so we'll go ahead and check those in. So we have three three elements off of this root element here, and uh, if you notice. 
within any individual element, we have this name, description, a template, and categories. Don't forget about what categories can do for you. Categories are uh, they're, um, they allow you to you know take uh, elements and add them into different buckets, and you're able to access uh, a group of elements on. Uh, maybe something like a functionality or, or something like that. So like if I had a bunch of tanks and they were spread everywhere, I could um, include them in a tank category and then I could easily find tanks. So there's a lot of ways that you can um, structure your hierarchy and add to your hierarchy uh, that will make it uh, easier to work with and access. So anyway, I just want to point out categories. It's, it's, it's something that uh, you can forget about that it's there, uh, but don't forget about it because it's very, very useful, I, th I think. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, um, and um, open up our source code that we had running. And if you remember, we had our default database here. And uh, we can go ahead and just run that really fast just to see what it is. So we have, uh, we're connected to SkyPy, we have PyDog, and um, that's where we just added some of these. So what I'd like to do is, is go ahead and find those elements and um, and see if we can list those out next, okay, under PyDog. All right, so the uh, looking at the at the SDK, we have this uh, AF element, and the AF element is part of this OSI Soft AF dot assets class, and we can literally we just call this uh, find elements, and we fill out all of these things, and um, and then we'll be we'll be good to go. So these things that we're talking about is you notice the first parameters we need to set in the database, and then we need to send in a search, uh, uh, send in a search root which is also an element, okay? But if it's null, then um, it'll start at uh, then the search starts at the AF database. It starts at that root, the root object, and then we have a search string which can be a lot of different things, but uh, we're going to use a wildcard in this case. But you can put in names. Uh, different ways to do searches, and then there's these various uh, these various other uh, kind of filter items um, that are that are pretty simple to use, and I'll and I'll show you those as we're coding along. But the main the main uh, uh, purpose of this method is we're going to return a um, a collection of elements. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and try it out. See if we can do it. Okay. So. Down here, we're going to, uh, we'll do a var, and we'll call this elements. Um, yeah, elements. And we'll make this, this is going to be af element. And that is going to be our uh, af.asset namespace. And then we're going to do the find elements. All right. So now we have to get this filled out. Well, I set set us up so that we can use uh, the database that we've we've already uh, been able to gain access to. So let's go ahead and add that in our AF database. Now we want to do the search root. I want to get those three tanks that are on the root. So let's just put null because we're going to start at the root. Our query is I'm just going to do a wildcard to return everything. The search field is um, you know what is it what uh, what item do I want to use in the uh, in the element uh, properties that uh, which one of these do I want to use when I'm doing my search so I could use categories but in this case I'm just going to uh, that wildcard is going to search off of the uh, tank um, so I want to do uh, we'll do this uh, AF search field dot there's an enumeration for this and then we can see which ones we can search off of I want to search off of the name Okay, and then we uh, and then do we want to search the full hierarchy or should we just search uh, something at the level that we're at? And I am just going to search the level that I am I'm, I'm at, which is that base level. So I'll go ahead and say uh, don't don't go into um, don't go into anything uh, further than just the level that I'm that I'm working on working at. Okay, and then the sort we're going to go ahead and set up a sort field a sort field and we'll make that name. And then we're going to set up a, a sort order, which is just going to be ascending. So these are just, just enumerations. And the last thing is how many records do we want to return? And here I'll just say something small like 100. Okay, so 
that should return those elements that we've created and let's go ahead and just do a for each and iterate through those and see if we uh, if we in fact do have them so I'm going to go ahead and say uh, element uh, element and that's going to be an element and we'll do a console right line and we'll just go ahead and uh, write out our element uh, element uh, and then here we'll we can look at uh, the various properties that we have we have a lot of things that uh, that we can access through uh, through our element we can find out what database it came from we can look at its description but you know we'll just do the name property here um, so there's there's a lot you can do with an element once you have it okay so let's go ahead and see uh, if we can um, see our three elements here. So here you can see we've, uh, we have tank one, tank two, and tank three. So we're able to successfully retrieve those um, through this find elements method. So what about uh, the, the other thing is, okay, that's great, but what about uh, finding something um, that's further up or uh, down the hierarchical um, ladder and let's go ahead and create a new child element. And what we'll do with uh, with this, I was I want to create some child elements on uh, for each each tank, and then we'll access those individually. And you can see how that looks. And still having problems with this. Seems to fail on the first one. And uh, let's see reference type parent child. Let's see if we get that. Um, Give it a second to catch up. Okay, so I have. Uh, we'll call this. Uh, we'll call this our. Uh, uh, let's create a red. Uh, red valve. And um, oops, this is tank two. Okay. Oh, let me go ahead and. I inadvertently created a reference to tank. And uh, let me go back and get a new element here. Let's create this back. Uh, tank two, and then I want to create a uh, a new child element. And let's see if I can get this working. Uh, red valve, and let's copy this, and let's paste. Oops. Let's. Uh, Well, okay. <laughs> One of those days. Okay, now let's go ahead. Let me just get this checked in, make sure I'm good. Okay, and um, I want to copy this, and I'm going to paste this a couple of times, and uh, let's see if I can see if I can copy and paste. There we go, and. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and we'll put it here a couple times. And um, let's go ahead and call this a green valve. Valve, and then um, let's go ahead and create a new element here. And let's call this a uh, blue, uh, yeah, valve. And let's create, uh, let's go ahead and copy that and paste it a few times, okay? So you get the idea. We've got we've got some valves. We have different number different number of valves under each tank. Now what I'd like to do is is to list out all of those, um, and this really is uh, is is nearly as simple as uh, what we just did. We'll just copy this uh, all this code, and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to paste the whole thing. And uh, so uh, instead of Instead of uh, uh, instead of um, when we're coming in here and we're doing an individual element, what I want to do is we're going to do this. These are going to be our sub elements, right? And we're going to do a find element, but this this parameter here is for our element root. And so what I want to do is I want to use the element in our tree just to um, use that as our root and then I'll return all the elements within that. So uh, if I do an element that's from this element 
we're going to do a search and then we're going to return all the sub elements off of here and then we want to just uh, take a look at our sub element and I'm going to put a little bit of a space in there so we can just see it kind of uh, you know indented there and so we're iterating through each element then we're going to iterate through each sub element and we should see the sub elements listed out underneath okay and so there you can see we have tank 1, tank 2, tank 3, and then you can see each one of the sub-elements located under, uh, under that. So this find elements uh, method, uh, you end up using it over and over in a lot of different ways. And um, in the documentation, you can see that there are a lot of different ways that you can call and the ways that you can set up these searches. So uh, this will become a workhorse for you. So make sure you, uh, you know, look at the documentation, see all the capabilities that exist there, and it will um, allow you to go in and find these elements and then start working with those elements. There's also the capability of crea creating and deleting elements, um, and uh, a lot of that still works off of uh, the notion of having an element to start with, and then you want to create a sub-element off of that. So. So you'll find that, uh, that uh, this method is, is, is going to be very handy. And so uh, this is just the tip of the iceberg as, as far as what it can do. So don't um, you know, take this uh, simple example as being that it might be limited because it's not. It's, it's extremely uh, versatile and powerful. So that is uh, what I need to cover in this part. So hopefully this uh, will uh, be a benefit for you. And I hope that you keep watching the series. And I really hope that you're continuing to program against or thinking about program, programming against the Pi system using the SDKs. Because I, I believe that it's, uh, it's the most powerful way to do, uh, to do just about anything that you can imagine. All right. My name is Lonnie. And uh, good luck and keep programming. And I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.